I moved to Anderson in 1960, came in order to practice law and practice law with J. Alex Neely, Jr. How I got interested in history, to a large degree, came from clients that I had, most of whom were older than I. And the sad thing is that so many of the stories that they had to tell just didn't sink in. You didn't just get interested in the history, you did a pretty deep dive. I mean, you, you wrote a very comprehensive series of books about the history of Anderson. I talked to the friends of the library uh, after we had pretty much put together the first volume and they went along with having it published and then we did the later volume. In both of those volumes, we did 37 people, uh, but in both of them, we also had a couple of other articles. The first one we had uh, John Hallman who was not living at that point but John had done a program and we had the tape of it and he was very good. One of the rules we had was that the person had to be living in Anderson County at the time we did the uh, books. Um, they didn't necessarily have to have been native but most of them were, prob probably 75% uh, were, or, or at least from this area of South Carolina. And it was absolutely amazing to me, these folks coming from so many different backgrounds had done the things that they had done. And a lot of it was because of World War II. They were not only telling us stories they remembered, they were remembering things that they had forgotten as we went. And it really became kind of a thrill to them, as well as a thrill to us, because here we had uh, them going back on things that uh, they hadn't even remembered that were really, I think, very important. For some years before I got into office, I had written for the Anderson Free Press. And uh, I had done articles there, but of course, much of that was uh, political type stuff and, and all, but some of it went beyond that, including one article that I didn't even remember I'd written that when I was doing research I've been doing now, I came across it. What had been apparently written by a prisoner who had escaped from here Camp 2 that then was recaptured, but it was about being up there in the stockade and what their complaints were. I started off uh, because I, I've been doing some articles for the Electric City News, and I started off being interested in the old county home. If you go out to the Civic Center and drive up Campson Road that goes past the entrance to the Civic Center, it's right on your left, but that was built in 1929. In 1841, two deeds were made to the commissioners of the poor here in Anderson. And those deeds were for 347 acres of land. And on that land, there were some poor houses built. The idea here was that the poor house would be on that property and there would be a county farm around it. But this was 347 acres, which I think they paid something like $2,600 for, but that today would be a pretty high figure. They had gotten that money from up in the Pendleton district that Anderson County was in originally with Pickens County. The Pendleton district had a poor house, and if you go up Highway 76, where the railroad crosses uh, the, the road, it was just beyond where that bridge is on the right-hand side. Counties of Anderson and Pickens were separated. The poor house was to be sold, uh, the land it was on, and uh, the money was be, to be separated between Pickens and Anderson and used for 
the poorhouse purposes. And so this was obviously part of the money that came uh, to the county of Anderson in order to build the poorhouses here. Uh, apparently the original poorhouses that were here until 1929 I think must have been about 50 yards from where the present location is, but I haven't been able to find anybody who can confirm this. And the present one, incidentally, I referred to as present one, in 1969 closed and is now county offices. But the amazing thing is what's on it now and how it's developed. Uh, now, it started with the county home. The next thing that was there, uh, other than the county farm, was the first county airport, or airfield, it wasn't a port, uh, apparently stretched towards the county home. And all it was was a bumpy uh, field that uh, some of these little, little small planes took off uh, from. But that is also where Amelia Earhart came in. And that site, generally at least, is identified right now up at the Civic Center thing that she came in for was beech nut gum. She was on a promotional trip and she was handing out beaches to the kids. This property starts um, and, and it's part of property that was, was conveyed by Alan Gentry and it starts where the balloon field is and includes where the balloons are launched. It goes over past where the lights are for the Christmas Hope of Lights, and then to the Recycling Center. The Recycling Center is where the, later, where the black um, uh, prison camp was. Uh, and if you go to the Recycling Center and come out the gate that's closest to where the Civic Center is, and you look to your right, you will see what was called the hole. That is a cinder block building Inside is about five feet by five feet by five feet high. And the only light that comes in, if there was a break in the wooden door and a pipe that came out the top for air, and the hole was where the prisoners who wouldn't obey were put in chains, even though they were in the cinder block building. Then as you go up the hill, the Civic Center is in the property. If you go over on the left-hand side, first of all, you've got the Vocational Rehab Center, and that's in it. If you go on out to McGee Road, that's in it, and you go up past all those county health buildings, they all are in that property. If you come back over to where the um, Civic Center is, uh, and incidentally, you will have passed the old county home doing that, all of the ball fields are in it except the last ball field before you get to Civic Center Boulevard. If the supervisors and the prisoners had not done the road work they did, Anderson County would have been way behind in its development. The bridges and the roads, and plus the maintenance of the roads, not just the building. It's blown my mind how the sports part works. This is a program like owning a football stadium. You own the, the facility and they come to you, well you go to them too, but they come to you and bring these fantastic programs and bring a whole lot of tourists in for those programs. I'm so darned excited about this 347 acres now and, and what, has, what has been done by the people here, um, it, it just blows my mind.